So I have good news and bad news. The bad news is that Ryzen 5 processors probably won't be any better at gaming than their Ryzen 7 counterparts. The good news is, they're still a good value. Probably. So it's been known since Ryzen 7 officially launched and reviews came out that Ryzen 7 isn't the greatest processor, at least for the price for gaming. That title still belongs to Intel, whether you're gonna go with the i5 line of processors or the i7 line of processors. They both seem to give you a little bit better gaming performance for your money than does the Ryzen 7 processors. Many of us have hoped that the Ryzen 5 line of processors from AMD would be a little bit more gaming focused, perhaps giving a little bit higher clock speed or just overall better performance. Unfortunately, that doesn't look like it's going to necessarily be the case. But before I go into the numbers we want to look at here, I do want to talk briefly about how Ryzen processors are organized for those of you that don't know. They are a modular system. Each Ryzen processor, the Ryzen 7 line anyways, has two what are called CCX modules. And basically those are quad-core modules that are very modular in the way that you can put many of them together to get higher core counts in processors. For example, the Ryzen 7 processors have two CCX modules, giving them a total of 8 cores and 16 threads. Now, my original speculation was that the 6-core parts, the Ryzen 5 parts, would have two CCX modules as well, and then two of those cores would be disabled, probably out of a bidding process, which would find defective cores or underperforming cores, and you can just disable those cores and sell those off as Ryzen 5 6-core parts. My speculation has always been, though, that the 4-core Ryzen parts would have one CCX module and eliminate the interface between the CCX modules that adds latency to the uh, processing of tasks, which may improve gaming performance. At least that was the hope. But that idea has apparently been dashed as the Ryzen 5 chips will all ship with the parts having two CCX modules, including the four core eight thread parts. So essentially what you'll have is on one CCX, you'll have two active cores and on the other CCX, you'll have two active cores. Now, when I first heard that, I was sort of bummed out because that would mean that you won't really see any performance gains in gaming over the Ryzen 7 parts by dropping down to a four core part um, or even versus the six core parts for that matter. But Hardware Unboxed, another YouTube channel, which I will link their video uh, in a card and in the description down below, uh, performed a number of tests running their own Ryzen 8 core part down to four cores. They performed tests with two cores on active on each CCX, much like the actual Ryzen 5 quad core chips will ship. And they also performed the test with one CCX completely disabled and one having all four of its cores still active, simulating what a Ryzen 5 four core th chip would actually be like had it only shipped with one CCX instead of two. And what they essentially found, as you can see in the graph to my left, your right, there's really not much difference. In fact, the graph I'm showing is their Battlefield 1 results their minimum and average frame rates, and you'll notice there's virtually no difference. This was the biggest gap that they saw in all of their testing. Wow, that's not much of a gap at all. In fact, in most of their tests, the numbers either came out identical between the two configurations, or there was a one or two frame uh, difference in favor of the four cores all on the same CCX instead of split between two. However, it does appear that the CCXs and how many modules are there and how many cores are disabled doesn't really look like it's gonna affect the Ryzen 5 performance in gaming at all, or at least more than a marginal amount. The good news here is that the Ryzen 5 parts are so competitively priced, they may still give you more bang for the buck, at least in gaming performance from the Ryzen 5 quad cores. And the reason for that is the i5-7600K is the i5 processor that has an unlocked multiplier allowing you to overclock. And it retails for $240 from most places. Now, I will say if you live near a micro center, you can pick it up probably for around that $200 price point. So if you live near a micro center, it becomes a much better deal. For $10 cheaper, you can get an i5-7600, but again, it does not have an unlocked multiplier and is locked at that 3.5 gigahertz. Now compare that to the more expensive of the Ryzen quad-core 8-thread parts, which is the 1500X. It retails for a full $40 cheaper than the i5-7600, and you can overclock it. Now, if it overclocks as well as the Ryzen 7 chips have, chances are you'll get it very near 4.0 gigahertz. In fact, because less cores are running, 
cooling between the two CCX modules, it should generate a significantly less amount of heat, which should allow you to keep it cool, thereby achieving a higher clock speed. So hopefully, fingers crossed on this, we can see some of these 1500X parts getting up towards 4.1 gigahertz, though that may be some wishful thinking on my part, that being said, 4.0 GHz seems to be a very reasonable expectation from these parts. Although Intel does still maintain an IPC lead over the Ryzen parts, at $40 cheaper, you get four more threads with a 1500X than you do with an i5-7600, plus you get the ability to overclock, which would close the performance gap, and it would allow you to do other multi-threaded applications more efficiently than the i5 parts would. So in conclusion, no, the Ryzen 5 parts, whether it be the quad cores or the six core parts, will not game better than their Ryzen 7 counterparts. That being said, they still give you a ton of performance for the price and may well be worth your hard-earned money when you go to build or upgrade your gaming PC. As always, guys, if you like this content, give me a like down below, share, subscribe. All those things are super helpful. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, at Hoosier Hardware. Now, we're going to let YouTube go ahead and queue up a couple more videos for you to watch for my channel. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.